The Life and Sad Ending of Jesse Coulter Jesse Coulter was born Miriam Johnson on May 25, 1943, in Phoenix, Arizona, U.S. She had a strict Pentecostal upbringing as her mother was a preacher. Her father was a race driver. She began playing the piano at the local church when she was 11 years old. After graduating from Mesa High School in 1961, she began singing in local clubs in Phoenix. In 1961, Coulter marrying guitarist Dwayne Eddy, and still using her real name of Miriam Johnson, she released two singles that were issued on the Jamie label. The first, Lonesome Road, received scattered airplay in several U.S. markets, though not enough to make any national charts. After a second single failed to even get regional airplay, Johnson did not record again for nearly a decade. She continued to tour with Eddie until divorcing in 1968. The following year, she met country artist Waylon Jennings who helped her secure a recording contract with RCA Victor. Jesse Coulter's first record, Lonesome Road, was produced by her husband Dwayne Eddy, but it didn't make any waves. Her second record was even less successful, so she stopped recording, but continued to tour with him. On March 25, 1970, she played keyboard for her husband during his appearance on The Johnny Cash Show. She released her debut album, A Country Star Is Born, on RCA, with Jennings and Chet Atkins co-producing. The album was not successful and did not make an impact on the country music market. It was Coulter's only album for RCA, and she left the label soon after. However, her face appears on several Jennings record covers from this period. In 1975, Coulter signed with Capitol Records. On the label, she released her debut single, I Am Not Lisa. The song was Coulter's breakthrough single it reached number one on the Billboard Country Chart and peaked at number four on the Billboard Pop Chart, becoming a crossover hit in 1975. Her second album, titled I Am Jesse Coulter was also released that year and reached number one on the Cashbox Top Country Albums Chart, number four on the Billboard Country Albums Chart, and number 50 on the Billboard 200 Top 100 Pop Albums Chart. The follow-up single from that same album What's Happened to Blue Eyes was also very successful, peaking at number five on the Billboard Country Chart and number 57 on the Pop Chart. The single's B-side, You Ain't Never Been Loved, charted among the top population 100 also in 1975. She released her single, I Am Not Lisa, in 1975, which reached the top spot on Billboard's country chart and fourth spot on Billboard's pop chart. Her album, I'm Jesse Coulter, was also released in 1975 and reached the top spot on the Cashbox Top Country Albums. It reached the fourth spot on the Billboard country chart and reigned at number 50 on the Billboard 200, Top 100 Pop Albums chart. What Happened to Blue Eyes, the follow-up single from I'm Jesse Coulter, was also very successful, reaching number 5 on the Billboard Country Chart and number 57 on the Pop Chart. The B-side of the single, You Ain't Never Been Loved, also made it to the top 100 of the Pop Chart. In 1976, she released two successful albums, Jesse and Diamond in the Rough. In 1977, her album, Miriam, came out, while in 1978, she unveiled the album, That's the Way a Cowboy Rocks and Rolls. In 1981, Coulter and her husband returned to release a duet album entitled Leather and Lace. The album was certified gold in sales by the RIAA that year, Coulter's second RIAA certified album to date. Two singles from, Leather and Lace titled, Storms Never Last, written by her and, The Wild Side of Life, It Wasn't God Who Made Honky Tonk Angels were major hits on the Billboard Country Chart. Stevie Nicks wrote the title track of the album. However, after receiving word that Coulter and Jennings might divorce, Nicks released her own version of the song as a duet with Don Henley. 
It peaked at number 6 on the pop chart, also in 1981. Also in 1981, Coulter released her final studio album on Capitol Records, Ride and Shotgun, which also spawned Coulter's last charting single on the country charts, Holdin' On. As the decade progressed, Coulter's success began to decline. She released an album in 1984 on the triad label titled Rock and Roll Lullaby, produced by Chips Moman. However, in the later years of the decade, she decided to let her recording career decline to help take care of and nurse her husband through his drug abuse and various medical problems. She remained active during this time. In the early 1990s, she focused her attention on performing and released an album of children's music titled Jesse Coulter Sings Just for Kids, Songs from Around the World in early 1996. It featured a guest appearance by Jennings, who recited some of his poetry for the video. In 2000, Coulter performed on Jennings' live album Never Say Die, released two years before his death in 2002, at age 64. In 2006, Coulter returned to recording with a new studio album released on the Shout Factory label, Out of the Ashes. Out of the Ashes was Coulter's first studio album in over 20 years. The album was given many positive reviews, including All Music, which gave the album 4 out of 5 stars in 2006. Out of the Ashes was her first album since 1981 to chart on the Top Country Albums chart, peaking at number 61. In 2007 Coulter recorded a duet version of her 1975 hit I Am Not Lisa with Deanna Carter on her 2007 album, The Chain. In 2017, Coulter and Jan Howard provided guest vocals to a track appearing on Written in Song, an album by Jeannie Seeley. The song, called We're Still Hangin' in There Ain't We Jesse, references how Seeley and Coulter are seemingly two of the only women in country music who managed to have a successful marriage. Coulter's first album in 11 years, The Psalms was released on March 24 via Legacy Recordings. The album consisted of Coulter's favorite book of Psalms passages put to music and was produced by Lenny Kay. On April 11, 2017, Coulter released a tell-all memoir titled An Outlaw and a Lady, a memoir of music, life with Waylon, and the faith that brought me home. In personal life, Coulter met guitarist Dwayne Eddy in Phoenix. He produced her first record, and she toured with him. They were married in 1961 in Las Vegas, settling in Los Angeles. Coulter and Eddie have a daughter, Jennifer. In 1968, Eddie and Coulter separated, divorcing later that year. Coulter moved back to Arizona. In 1969 she met and married Waylon Jennings. At this time, Coulter adopted her stage name, Jesse Coulter. Coulter and Jennings had one son, Waylon Albright Shooter Jennings. In the early 1980s, Coulter and Jennings nearly divorced due to his addiction to drugs and other forms of substance abuse. However, they remained together until Jennings's death in 2002. Probably, right now is her worst time when her health is slowly deteriorating. Thank you for listening to the story about the life of Jesse Coulter like and comment on your opinion in the comments section below.